Around 20 days ago, on March 12, 2021, the Ever Given ship finished loading. There was over 20,000 containers on this ship and it just started its journey. And it wanted to go to Rotterdam in the Netherlands. The route was going through the Indian Ocean, past Yemen, go through the Red Sea and enter the Suez Canal. And from this canal, go to Mediterranean Sea. And after that, go to the Strait of Gibraltar and from the North Sea, get to the destination. When this ship entered the Suez Canal, a sandstorm started. The storm was so bad you couldn't even see. The captain says the storm was so bad you couldn't see in front of you and we really couldn't see where we were going. We just all of a sudden noticed that the ship has stopped. On March 23rd at 7.40 a.m. local time, Ever Given has crashed and stopped. In this situation, the most important vein in the world has stopped. 30 minutes later, two Egyptian tugboats come and help to free this thing. But Ever Given was stuck pretty bad and it was not going to be easy to let this thing go. In one hour, the whole world knew about this, that a giant ship that has a length of a 440 meters has blocked the entire Suez Canal. If you guys don't already know, we have two kinds of containers, a 40 footer and a 20 footer. A 40 footer is 12 meters in length and two and a half meters height. 20 footer has the same height, but six meters in length. Ever Given had 20,124 of these containers. And you should also know that Ever Given, which is owned by Evergreen, is one of the biggest cargo ships in the world. Titanic looks like this next to this ship, and it's kind of the same size as the Empire State laying on its side. Those tugboats couldn't do much. Then after that, they bought a bunch of excavators to free up the sand around the ship. This excavator is a giant, but look at it next to Ever Given. One of the problems with the Suez Canal is that it's built like this, and if you go to the side too much, you could get stuck. Every excavator they could find nearby, they send it over here to get rid of all the sand around and underneath Ever Given. If you don't know where this canal is, it connects the Red Sea to the Mediterranean. And it's handmade. And the person that ordered to build this canal was Darius the Great, King of Persia. He ordered this when he conquered Egypt because he wanted to connect the Eastern world to the Western world. If this canal didn't exist, this ship would have to go all the way around Africa then come up again. Not only is this canal important for the world's economy, but it's one of the most important things to Egypt. Because Egypt has two ways of making money. First one is tourism, and the second one is the Suez Canal. This canal makes $14 million daily for Egypt, which adds up to $5 billion a year. You could pretty much say that on average, any ship that passes in this canal has to pay $300,000. One of the biggest problems with this canal is that in the southern section is a one-way. It's exactly like a one-lane, one-way road. Either a ship has to go this way or that way, and they can't pass next to each other. On both sides, there's always traffic. On the north side, there's a small lake called Bitter Lake, and ships could stay there until the road is free to go. And in this lake, you could also U-turn as well. The north side used to be a one-lane road too, but in 2015, they opened the second lane, and it reduced the traffic a lot. But the place that Ever Given got stuck was in the southern part, and as you know, it's only one lane. So it got stuck in a place where other ships couldn't pass by. And because this ship blocked the whole entire canal, a lot of ships were forced to make a U-turn and go around Africa. Ships carrying food and medical supplies. 
More than 300 ships were waiting in traffic, and most of those ships were oil tankers, and $10 billion worth of stuff were waiting on both sides. The main problem for shipping companies because of this blockade was that they didn't know how long it will take until the canal is free. And that is the reason the people that were in a hurry had to make a U-turn and had to go around Africa. The cool part is that the sister ship named Evergreet, which is owned by Evergreen, was stuck in traffic and it was one of the first ships that made a U-turn. Ships like oil tankers had no issues waiting, but all this waiting did cause the oil prices to go up around the world. But medical supplies and food, or ships that had living animals in it, like carrying goats and sheep, couldn't stay for a long time because there wasn't enough food and water for the animals. And right now, not only is COVID-19 affecting everything, this ship comes in and makes everything else worse. The economy of the world was already struggling. This ship came and made it worse. COVID slowed down the world's economy by a lot. Like for example, in Europe and the US, for every 100 containers that gets there, only 40 of those containers leave. And this is very bad for the world's economy. In the end, on March 29th at 3.30 p.m. local time, Ever Given was freed. And thanks to this thing, that day was a full moon. And in a full moon, the tides are higher. And the high tides obviously bring the water higher. This was really helpful. And from the other side, 14 tugboats pulled and pushed this ship to freedom. They didn't let the ship drive by itself. The tugboats pulled it all the way to Bitter Lake to inspect it and see what exactly happened. Not only did this traffic jam hurt the world's economy, but it messed up all the ports around the world. Because when the traffic jam stops, a lot of ships arrive to ports and overload the port. And this is a huge problem for the ports because they don't have the space for this many ships to show up at once. These issues start in the ports, then continue onto the railroads, and then on the roads. In conclusion, we can say, one of the most important places in the world got stuck, had a heart attack, and after a shock, they brought it back. Until we can go back to the normal system, it's gonna take some time, and the damages that this thing caused are going to be noticeable for a while. Like a person living in the US or Europe has to pay way more for fuel now. And things coming from Asia are going to be more expensive now. And it also hurts the Asian side as well, because both sides of the canal were closed. And we can say that it affects the prices for everything around the world.